Welcome back. This is part two of understanding management's context. Let's move from the external environment to the concept of organizational culture. Just like countries have cultures, organizations have cultures as well. We can define organizational culture as the shared values, principles, traditions, and way of doing things that influence the way organizational members act. So again, similar to the culture in a particular country, the culture within an organization has an influence. It's a, it's a group of ideas, a way of doing things shared by a group of people that will influence the decisions and actions of in individuals within that organization. We can consider culture to be strong or weak. A strong culture has a strong influence. A strong culture means that the values of the organization are widely shared from top to bottom, and there's a strong connection between those values and the behaviors, the actions, the decisions of the individuals in the organization. In contrast, a weak culture refers to an organization whose values are only held by the top, senior management top management and as a result there's not really a strong connection there's not much of a connection between the values and the behavior of the individuals in the organization because only a few people are influenced by those values and others aren't influenced by the values and therefore their behavior their actions their decisions won't have a direct connection to those organizational values we can look at several dimensions of organizational culture. So here, looking in more detail at the components of organizational culture. Stability. Does an organization's culture support keeping things as they are or being open to change as well as uncertainty? Another factor, innovation and risk-taking. Is an organization open to new ideas, open to unknowns? Or do they want to not experience the risk associated with trying new things? Next, attention to detail. Some organizations are very detail-focused, and other organizations aren't focused on the detail, don't prioritize the detail. They're perhaps more into general ideas and concepts. Continuing, outcome orientation. There are means and there are ends. The means are the way we get to the results and the ends are the results. Some organizations focus simply on the ends, what the result is, what is the outcome, without considering the means, the way to get to that outcome. Other organizations have a stronger emphasis on the means to get to the end, the individual steps, the the intermediate steps that are happening along the way that get us to the desired result. If a company focuses just on the outcome, then the means aren't that important. How we get to the result, what are we doing to get the result, are those steps ethical? Those aren't questions that an outcome-oriented organization would ask, but an organization who isn't just focused on the outcome, but is also considering the means, will ask those questions. People orientation is another dimension of organizational culture. Does an organization focus on the individuals in the organization, the effects that the organization's decisions, products, services, activities have on people, the effects at the individual level? Or does an organization not consider the people factor to be important? Team orientation. Does an organization focus on individual effort or rather on team effort? Does an organization encourage team effort or perhaps discourage team effort and encourage people to work at an individual level? And then finally, competition cooperation. Does an organization support working together? Or does an organization encourage individuals or teams to have a perspective of competition, working against each other? Looking at the prior point, team orientation. This doesn't necessarily mean that the organization also supports cooperation. We could have a team-oriented entity 
who's also competition oriented. Or we might have an entity who doesn't focus on teams, who emphasizes or who is oriented towards the individual efforts, but is an organization that does support cooperation. These are the dimensions of organizational culture. Well, where does culture come from? How is it established and how does it continue? How is it maintained in an organization? Culture begins with the founders, the values of the individual or individuals who set up the organization in the first place. And those organizational values, the culture of the organization, is carried on, is maintained through a process of employee socialization. Socialization is how an organization helps an employee adapt to and take on that organization's culture. Stories, historical events that were important in the past as the company began and developed, became successful. Sharing those stories is one means of socialization. Another is symbols. Symbols could be a particular drawing or a trademark of the company, maybe a type of clothing. These types of things are symbols that enable the employees to adjust to to become socialized to the organizational culture. Rituals, particular activities, things that are done just at this company that might not be done anywhere else. An example of a ritual would be a particular handshake, a particular way of greeting each other. These are rituals that usually are exclusive to one organization and those are part of the socialization process. And finally, language. Using certain words or phrases are examples of qualities particular to an organization's culture and when an employee begins to use those same phrases and words they're becoming socialized to that culture. And culture affects the functions of management. In our first lecture, in the, at the beginning of the course we learned about the four functions of management. Planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Planning relates to the goals and strategies of an organization. Organizing refers to the activities of an organization. Leading addresses the idea of working with people to achieve the goals of an organization. And controlling refers to monitoring our results, evaluating those results, and making any changes or corrections that are necessary. And finally, let's look at some current issues in organizational culture. One is innovation. Building innovation into the culture as a part of that company's culture so that the employees and the managers and the senior executives at the company all have the idea that being innovative, being creative, coming up with new ideas is an important part of being a member of this organization. Next is customer responsiveness. More and more customers are demanding that the organizations they do business with are attentive to their needs, don't just provide the product or the service of the company, but also ensure that if there are any questions, someone's available to answer the questions. If there are any problems, someone is available to help with and solve those problems. So the customer responsiveness is a component of the organizational culture. And finally, the idea of workplace spirituality. We can define this concept as a sense of purpose through meaningful work. In other words, people more and more are looking for more than just a paycheck when they go to work. They want to feel that what they're doing has meaning. They want to feel a sense of excitement in what they're doing, a sense of contribution to something meaningful. And the idea of the component of workplace spirituality in the organizational culture is that everyone in the organization has the sense that what we do is meaningful, what we do is having an impact not only in our community or in our country or on a global scale, but also at the individual level so that the employees the members of that organization feel like they're experiencing fulfillment and growth as a part of the organization. So this concludes the lecture Understanding Management's Context. Be sure to work through the exercises 
related to this lecture, and I look forward to working with you in class on our case study analysis.